Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Kale Lowry and Chris Lopez. So Kale Lowry recently sat down with Bunny. Um, Bunny is Jelly Roll's wife. I really don't know if she's famous or like what she's famous for outside of being Jelly Roll's wife, but I do know that I love Jelly Roll and I'm a really big fan of Bunny as well, but I, is her name Bad Bunny or just Bunny? I don't know. I really want to call her Bad Bunny, but I think it's just Bunny. Either way, Kale sat down with um, Bunny doing this podcast, and she opened up about a situation that happened um, back when her and Chris were like on again, off again. And she's talked about the situation just a little bit in the past, but never in depth as much. But now she's finally opening up. And not only is she opening up, but Chris is actually defending himself and saying, like, if you're going to tell a story, tell the whole story. And yes, this is a, um, a digital background. See, see, see. Um, but I added it just because I thought that would be cool. I was actually looking for the background that I used way back in the day with the little chair. I really want to find that one just to like put it up every once in a while because it's kind of nostalgic, you know. But anyways, we're going to go ahead. We're going to roll the intro and we're going to get right into it. Okay, you guys, let me know how y'all like the background um, because I can't actually switch them up every once in a while if that's something that um, you would be interested in having me change the background. I personally do like my office. Sean built it with his bare hands, but I think it'd be cool every once in a while. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get into this. Like I said, um, Kale recently opened up on a podcast about a domestic situation that she went through with her baby daddy, um, Chris Lopez. Um, so trigger warning, this story contains mention of DV. If that is something that you find triggering and you need to sit this one out, I completely understand. Hit the thumbs up on your way out and join us back here for the next one. So, um, Kale has finally revealed details of the night several years ago that she claims her baby daddy, Chris Lopez, tried to unalive her. Now, Chris has a lot to say about Kale's statements. Um, in, an, in a new interview with the Dumb Blonde podcast, Kale talked to the host, Bunny XO, about the night that happened. It was October 2019. Now, um, she has hinted and mentioned that there was DV in their relationship, but this is actually the first time that she actually reveals details about what happened, like sit down details. There was a time um, a while back where Chris was on a podcast. Or not a podcast. He was live on TikTok and he was talking about Kale. So she like came in the chat and he was like, oh, I'm going to stop you at the door. You're not about to come in here. Um, he said something about, I'm going to check you. He said, I'm going to check you right there. You're not about to come in here and talk about our problems. And she said in the chat, you're going to check me or you're going to choke me again. Like you're going to check me or choke me again or something like that. And that's when people really kind of caught on to the fact that there was some DV involved. And there has been a point where Kale was arrested and charged with like breaking and entering and getting physical with Chris. Those charges were dropped and she has always maintained that she did not break in his house and that she did not get physical with him. Now, um, the full podcast drops, what's today? Today. It actually drops today. Um, but preview clips, you can see in preview clips where Kale is discussing what she claims um, is what. Chris did to her back in October 2019. So in a TikTok live that was posted after the clip was published, Chris then responded to Kel's claims, admitting that he did indeed choke and try to smother Kel Lowry. So he said, of the situation, I'm going to tell you guys what he said. We're going to talk about what Kel said. So, um, uh, okay. Kel, Kel told Bunny, she said, I've never really discussed this. It was not a good time in my life. Chris had showed up to my house. We had this crazy situation happen, and I literally thought I was going to die. I think the only reason why I fought for my life, and I think that was the only reason I, I really fought for my life, because she's like, I really thought I was going to die. So I actually had to fight for my life because I thought he was going to kill me. She says he literally put my face into the couch and was just smothering me. I remember like turning my head a certain way. And being able to gasp for air. 
Kel stated that she then texted a friend writing, he's going to kill me. She said, then I threw my phone under my bed because I thought if he gets my phone, I won't have a way to call for help. Kel also stated on the podcast that this was not the first time that Chris had gotten violent with her, but it was the first time that she did defend herself. She said, I had never fought him before when he put his hands on me or, you know, abused me. I don't know what took over me that night, but I fought for my effing life. And I still did not want to call the effing police. I was like, I want you to choose me. I want you to get better. Now, around this time, Mikhail became pregnant by Chris for the second time. And then their son, Creed, was born July 2020. Let me see if we can play it. Oh, thank you, Erica. I'm so glad that you enjoy it. Thank you. I said, let me know if you can hear it because sometimes when I share things, okay, you guys should be able to hear this. I never really discussed the circumstances. Mm -hmm. It was not a good time. It and just probably got worse because it never yeah. gets better. No, it doesn't. And you know, there was a time where like I texted someone and I was like, he's going to kill me. And then I threw my phone under my bed because I thought if he gets my phone, I won't have any way to call for help. You know, Chris had showed up to my house. We had this crazy situation happen. I literally thought I was going to I think the only reason why I fought for my life, he literally, he put my face into the couch and was just smothering me. I had never fought him before when he put his hands on me or, you know, abused me. When you get into an abusive relationship, you literally, there's a fire that comes up out of you and you're like, motherfucker, touch me one more time and I'm going to kill you. I don't know what took over me, but that night I fought for my fucking life. I remember just like turning my head a, a certain way and being able to like, I'm sorry, there's cursing, trigger warning, cursing and talks of TV gasp for air and I still I still did not want to call the fucking police mm -hmm. I didn't I was so just like I want you to choose me I want you to get better I'm all loud. sorry guys my husband does not check his phone I texted and said go on live he just up there and said come here dude check your phone no I'm just kidding check your phone Sean um no, she is talking to um, Bunny, who has the podcast, the Dom Juan podcast, who is with Jelly Roll. Are they actually married? I don't know if they're actually married. Um, but there she is talking about it. Now, after the preview clip of Kale's appearance on the Dom, the Dom Juan podcast was posted, Chris then went live on TikTok to discuss the situation. When someone asked him to comment on Kale's claims that he choked or smothered her, he brought up the fact that Kale has gotten violent with him as well. So Chris said, is she talking about the time she punched me in the face several times? Um, he then said, I ain't almost killed nobody, bro. No cap, no cap. I never almost killed nobody. Everybody was always, always breathing. They always had room to breathe. They always had their phones. I never, ever, ever killed anybody. I never beat her. If that's her story, that's what I'm saying. If y'all want to talk about it, damn, y'all treating this crap like it was yesterday. I'm not excusing my behavior, but you're talking about an incident that happened four years ago. I hope Kale told the whole truth and not no made up version. Not no crap that they thought happened. He then admitted that what Kale was saying about him choking her and getting violent with her was true. However, he just denied the fact that he beat her. He said, I'm telling you, you should believe her because I'm not saying her story is wrong. I already owned up to my crap. So no, the story's not wrong. I did choke her. I already admitted to that. It's already on my record. The DV is true. I'm not going to hide from that. That's something that I am honest about. That DV part is true. But the whole beating her, beating her up part, no, that's not true. I never beat her up. I never did any of that crap. Um, so for the record, in that clip, Kale does not state that Chris beat her up. She only stated that he, you know, smothered her. She thought she was going to die. Um, in other instances, she um, has stated that he's put her, put his hands on her, choked her, and attempted to smother her. Um, so Chris then addressed Kale, who he claims has hit him multiple times. He says, "But if you want to sit here, and, if you want to sit here and tell the story of DV." Then tell the part where you physically attacked me. 
multiple times, not just once, not just twice, and not just three times either. So if you're going to tell the truth, tell the whole effing truth, bro. Truth, bro. Um, if you're going to sit here and paint a narrative, nope. If you're going to sit here and paint a narrative of a to be abusive, then say the part where you started hitting that man first. So he then opened up more about the incident, saying that alcohol could have potentially been responsible for what he did. He said, I don't know what the F I was thinking. And now I want to tell you guys, as he was talking about this, he's smiling the whole time. Smiling. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. And then he says, I was drunk, but that don't take away from the fact of what I did. And it doesn't make it right. He then stated um, that he, when he went before the judge, he did admit to what he did as well. He said, I already felt bad. You know how long it took for me to accept this and everything I went through from all this crap. Later, he did say, I made a mistake. I effed up. Um, now, this is not the first time the October 2019 DV situation has come up. Like I was talking about earlier, back in July 2020, um, when Kale was pregnant with Preeti, they got into a fight on Instagram. Chris was talking about Kale filing a uh, protection from abuse on him and that was in the fall of 2019 so around the time that this took place around the time that he you know allegedly smothered her kale came into the comment section and threatened to reveal the details of what took place so chris told kale not to come in his instagram live and put their business out there he says i'm going to check you right now at the door don't put our business out there that's for me if i decide that i want to put it out there and then kale in the comment section wrote check me where choke me again and all right. Right there, you can kind of see it. Where'd it go? Right there. Check me where. Check me again. So that's where she came into um, the comment section saying that. Yeah. Right, Erica. Yeah, that's the thing is, I don't think anybody is innocent here. You know, I don't think anybody is innocent in this situation. Um, let's see. They did talk about this situation um, on Team Mom 2 Season 11 reunion. So, Kale said during the reunion, that she had to go to therapy after the incident where Chris, on, on um, the reunion, she said, Chris almost killed me in October 2019 by DV. So I had to go to therapy to the therapy for that. Um, when they asked her if she would ever open up about that, she says that she wanted to. She just hadn't figured out the right time or the way to tell the whole story of what took place. So at that time on the reunion, she declined to go into specific details about what happened, only saying that Kale did almost, that Chris almost did kill her in October 2019. Um, Dr. Drew and Nessa then questioned Chris about the situation. Um, so they talked to Kale, and then after that, they talked to Chris, and they brought it up to him. And then um, Chris told them, he said, it's been abused on both sides. But he did deny that he ever injured Kale. He said, she's making it seem like I really beat her. That's the story going around, that I actually beat her. I never did beat her. Did I threaten? I might have said some things out of anger. I'm not going to stand here and act like I'm innocent. I've done things. And I've served time in jail for that. I got handed my punishment. I'm not about to let y'all keep punishing me for something I did three or four years ago. So the Dumb Blonde podcast um, featuring Kale drops today. And then Kale also had um, Bunny on her podcast, um, Coffee Combos. So if you listen to Coffee Combos, um, there's going to be one where Kale interviews Bunny. And then you can listen to Dumb Blonde Podcast to um, Kale where she opens up. I hope that do you plan to have any more kids? What's the deal? And maybe Kale will open up like, yeah, pregnant twins. Um, but either way, man, this is really like, 
I'm trying to think of a way to put this. It's a terrible situation because they have two children together who will grow up and know about the drama that went on between their parents. They will know that their dad tried to suffocate their mom. They will know that their mom got physical with their dad. And this is kind of the case for Lincoln and the two younger ones because, you know, she hit Javi on the show. So that's going to be something that her kids know about. Um, does he still see the kids? Yes. So um, he does not pay child support, from my understanding. Um, I actually listened to another podcast not too long ago where she did say that he's, he does get the kids on a regular, but he does not pay child support. Okay, it's on Kale's. It's on Barely Famous podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Brie, for saying that because I couldn't remember. For some reason, I was thinking it's on Coffee Combos, but it's on Barely Famous. So thank you. Hey, Phyllis. Um, Haunted Haley says at LB, I don't follow closely anymore, but I am curious. Is it true about Kale being an abuser in the past? If so, did she take accountability, serve time for her actions? So, yes. Um, back when Kale was married to Javi, there was a scene on the show where she did get physical with him. She hit him. Um, and she does talk about that every once in a while because she gets called an abuser a lot. And she has talked about how, you know, that was a very long time ago. I went to therapy for that. I went to anger management. Like, I've really come a long way. So I would say she's acknowledged it. Like, she's acknowledged that what she did was wrong, that she shouldn't have done it. Um, the fact that she did it to Chris years down the road, it's not the best look because it makes you wonder, like, did you really learn your lesson if you're still doing it to baby daddies? I guess, you know, the important thing is, is where she is now. She's with this guy, Elijah. They allegedly have one baby together and she's allegedly pregnant with twins. Um, so I guess the, the tall tale would be, uh, how she is with him and if she ever gets uh, you know, uh, abusive with him. I don't know. Um, I, Kale had a rough childhood. She did not have parents. Her dad abandoned her. Her mom was an alcoholic and her mom kicked her out. Her mom chose men over her and she had no family, essentially. Uh, so the fact that Kale, she's made some mistakes. I'm glad that she has spoken up to say, like, yes, I did that and I was wrong. Allegedly, Kale is pregnant with twins. Allegedly, I have another video up about it because she was spotted and she actually wore it on the Dumb Blonde podcast as well. She's wearing a bracelet that lo looks to be made by one of her kids and it says mom of seven on it. So, right, Haunted Haley. And it has happened, you know, with Javi. I don't think it ever happened with Joe, but it happened with Javi and then it happened with Chris, allegedly, you know, so. But um, I need to listen to the whole podcast because I really want to get like the whole story and hear all of it because I've heard of some of it, you know, when that the, you know, check me or choke me. So we always knew that there was some situation that occurred um, on the reunion saying he almost killed me, you know, back in October 2019. So I always knew that there was some situation that took place, but just never really knew all the details of it. Hey, Brittany, maybe she's counting the miscarriages. And that could be possible, too. I think one was, an, I think she had an abortion and then she had a miscarriage, right? She got pregnant before she got pregnant with Isaac, and that was an abortion. And then she miscarried with Joe, I mean, um, Javi. So it could potentially be. Um, I'm really, I really want her to speak out about this and tell us, um, but. I don't think she will because baby number five, she hasn't even acknowledged baby number five and come out with baby number five. And like baby number five is here. Come on. Baby number five about to go to college. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but baby number five will be about to go to college before she ever tells us more than likely. But anyways, you guys, so I'm going to go find the podcast and link it in the description box if you guys going to want to listen to it. But I am very curious to hear more of the details. Now, I did hear that the two were getting along. She actually said that on a podcast recently. She said, I'm actually finally getting along with all of my baby daddies. And the way that it happened was um, 
at the boys like football or baseball or whatever she approached chris and was like listen let's let bygones be bygones i really want to get along with you and they said okay i hope her talking about this situation doesn't cause a problem for them you know i hope he doesn't get mad oh Brittany, welcome to the lb family thank you so much i appreciate that um Robbie, not sure how to go membership. I'm so glad that you did. Welcome the new members. Um, but anyways, I have y'all that video on the bash chat is still downloading. It is taking forever. Um, but just keep your eye out on it. I might have to stop it and retry because it's just taking a long time. Um, but Oh, and I also, I'm thinking I'm going to change the name, the Bash Chat channel name to Crime and Tea with LB. I really like the Fatal Files, but it seems like everybody else likes Crime and Tea with LB. Um, so I got to work on doing memberships, which is going to be time consuming because I have to make all the little, like, um, beside y'all's name, how it has a B. Like, I had to make those, right? So I have to make, like, little things and put beside y'all's name and everything, so it's going to be a little time consuming. And I also wanted to do like a little live stream tonight. I kind of wanted to. Oh, uh, y'all, there's this part. There's just like where I struggle with myself um, that I want to do a live stream and watch a uni rock stream where he reacts to my stream and like respond to it. But then there's this other part of me that's like, don't even waste your time. Don't even waste your energy. And then Sean's like, don't, don't, don't like ignore, ignore, ignore. Act like he doesn't exist. Don't pay it any mind. So I, I wonder, you know, I stress about that. I don't know. I'm like, I want to. No, I don't need to. Um, Robbie, I believe you were gifted by Appalachian Crochet Design last night. Robbie says, what can I do as a member? So, like, when I do pre-recorded videos, I usually put them up for members first. And then hours later, I'll put them up for everyone else. And then, um, like, we have a Discord for members. So, after this live ends, I'll have to go post the link on the community tab. And you can click that link and you can join the members discord um sometimes and i need to do this i need to do a live strictly for members because every once in a while i'll do live for members um, um sherry he did a live responding to me the other night um so anyways i don't know you guys let me thoughts in the comment section below um like i said i'm gonna link kale's the podcast that she did in the description box so you guys can go find it. It's not there yet, so give me about 10 minutes. I've been watching for years. I love your coverage and the way you discuss others' lives, your compassion and care for others. Oh, thank you, Brittany. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, don't stress about it. Let him talk. Lions don't lose sleep over the opinions of she. That is so true. That is so true. Hey, Ryan. Anyways, you guys give this video a thumbs up if you haven't yet. Um, leave your thoughts in the comment section below if you are watching on replay. I'm going to, like I said, new members, I'm going to go put the link to the Discord over on the community tab. So just give me a few minutes and I can get that up. Um, the only people that will be able to see it is that. Sarah says, Elle, thanks to you and Emily D. Baker. I'm hooked on Vanderpump. I just started Sunday and I'm halfway. I know it's Sarah. It's like, I can't. I think we got, got the sugar bear early for members. Yes. The Sugar Bear interview was early, and um, Sugar Bear actually wants to come back on and do like do it live. So we might be doing that soon. Um, thank you, Abby. I know he is a DJ. I, I so agree with that. Anyways, you guys, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.